Ulama and Zongo Chiefs, fellow Muslims, Jama'a, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuhu. Wa Alaikum wa Salaamu wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuhu. Today is a sacred day and an auspicious one for Muslims around the world. Having embarked on a month long spiritual journey of fasting in the holy month of Ramadan, praying ceaselessly for family and loved ones, and showing kindness to humanity. As we climax the celebration of Eid of Fitr today, a unique day of gratitude, remembrance, charity, and feast, I join fellow Muslims and fellow Ghanaians to say Alhamdulillah. And on behalf of His Excellency President Nana Dudakwa Kukwa and the government, I also extend a warm message of congratulations to the Muslim Ummah for the successful completion of an engrossing and surely a fulfilling spiritual exercise. As the exalting and gratifying chorus of Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wallahi ilaha Allah, Wallahi. Reverent across, we indeed cannot thank the Almighty Allah enough. As we say, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wallahi la illallah, Allah Akbar. His bountiful mercy and grace upon us. Not many were here with us last year, are uh, with us today, and not many who started this year's Ramadan with us are uh, with us today. As we observe the day and exalt Almighty Allah, let us spare a moment and remember our loved ones who have been called by our Maker and are no more with us. May the Almighty Allah extend His infinite mercy upon all of them. And on this special day, let us continue the remarkable kindness we show during Ramadan by extending warm support and love to members of our community in need of our warmth and kindness. Our sacrifices, spiritual fulfillment and joy will be meaningless if that family or that community neighbor is unhappy today because they don't have what it takes to put smiles on their faces on a day everyone should be fulfilled. And beyond the holy month of Ramadan, let us all strive to make every month and every moment special by being kind to humanity, demonstrating peace, love, unity in accordance with the dictates of Islam and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I always reiterate the need for peace, tolerance and unity amongst our diverse community because of its incalculable value to human existence and nation building. We often don't cherish these values until they are lost. So it is important we continue to remind ourselves of the need to uphold them. My brothers and sisters, it is not for, the, for nothing that the Holy Quran copiously admonishes us to uphold peace, respect and tolerance, to strengthen unity in the diverse race and societies of the world. For us in Ghana, our diversity is more telling in our ethnic backgrounds and religious beliefs, and we have remarkably held firmly together as one people over the years in spite of the threat and bigotry of some overzealous individuals and groups. 
Let us continue to build family as one people and continue to strengthen our national spirit of inclusivity, tolerance, peace, and unity. The beauty of our country's diversity, tolerance, and respect for it is demonstrated by my recent historic election as flag bearer of the new patriotic party. The party dominated by our Christian and non northern brothers and sisters. Indeed, some way seers and persons with impossibility mindsets said it was not possible for me to be elected as flag bearer because of my background. But the party proved that Ghana, in Ghana, we are one people, foremost. We respect diversity and we respect each other and we respect competence, integrity, and hard work. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we approach the campaign season for the elections in December, let us all be guided by acts which will preserve and uphold the diversity of our country and its unity. To the youth, you are the nation's most valuable asset. And no circumstance, under no circumstance, should anybody lead you into form of electoral, into any form of electoral violence. Ghana needs you, safe, active, and lively, to lead the nation's charge in the promising fourth industrial revolution. Let us all say no to all forms of electoral violence. Election is a matter of choosing leaders peacefully who I believe have been ordained by Allah. Allah has told us in Quran chapter 3 verse 26 that sovereignty and power belongs to Allah and He gives sovereignty and power to whom He wills. The Christian faith similarly shares the same view. So it is important for all of us to go about the electoral process peacefully for the good people of Ghana to vote for God's will to prevail. No single life should be lost. No property should be destroyed. No relations should be ruined because of differences in our political views. On this special day, let me also reiterate our government's commitment to inclusive development of our nation. The policy which has ensured that no group or community has been left behind in our development agenda across the nation in the past seven years. For the Zongo community, I'm happy to say that our decision to establish a special development vehicle, the Zongo Development Fund, has yielded impactful results with a number of infrastructure projects, over 200 of them across the country, as well as provided educational grants and scholarships to brilliant but needy students, including 40 students from Zongos currently studying medicine in Cuba on full scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to personally comment on the raging issue of LGBTQ in Ghana. First of all, it is important to note that our cultural and societal norms and values as Ghanaians frown on the practice of homosexuality. Furthermore, as a Muslim, my view on this matter aligns with the position of my religious faith. The Holy Quran is replete with verses frowning on LGBTQ acts, including same-sex marriages. My faith is, therefore, very strictly against the practice of homosexuality. No ifs or buts. No shades of green. Therefore, I personally cannot support that which my religion 
and indeed all major religions in Ghana, as well as our societal norms and values, clearly and unequivocably forbid. All the major religion, religious traditions in Ghana, Christianity and Islam, are opposed to this practice. And I stand opposed to it now, and I will stand opposed to it as President, Inshallah. Finally, 